So you should have been able to label these periodic tables so that we can summarize some of the information we got from our periodic table exploration. And then we're going to expand on that to see some other patterns. The first thing you're asked to do is to label metals and nonmetals. You should be familiar with this periodic table that we were using in lesson one. And if we highlight the metalloids, that shows us the metals and the nonmetals. Everything to the left of the metalloids is a metal, and everything to the right of the metalloids is a nonmetal. So all of these guys are metals, and all of these are nonmetals. If we sort of draw this stair step on our periodic table, then that gives a pretty good approximation of where the metals end and the nonmetals start. So if we start on the left of boron and just kind of do a little stair step, that ends up being a pretty good approximation for our metals end and non-metal start. All of this over here are metals, and all of this over here are the non-metals. We can use that same periodic table to help us find the groups that we need to know the names of and the transition metals. So our alkali metals are here, alkali earth right there, our noble gases are here, and then this family right here are the halogens. You can see that's labeled right here. So it's the 17th group. And our transition metals are these little pink guys. So we can label our alkali metals, our alkali earth metals, the halogens, and the noble gases. The transition metals are several groups, and they're this little indented part. To figure out our valence electrons, we should have clicked on electrons and then looked at those configurations to identify the valence electrons and then just counted how many there were. So you might notice that all of these in the alkali metal group have one valence electron. And all of these in the alkali earth metal have two. And if you look at boron and all of the elements in its group, they all have three. And the carbon family all has four, and the nitrogen family all has five, and the oxygen family all has six, and the fluorine family all has seven, and the noble gases all have eight. Helium is an exception to that. Helium is a noble gas, but it only has two. They've moved it over here for this um, little exercise because it has two valence electrons like these alkali metals. But if you look at the way the periodic table is normally arranged, helium is over here with the noble gases. When we're looking at these configurations, what we're looking for is the number of electrons in the biggest energy level. So here for magnesium, this three is the biggest energy level and we have two electrons there. If we go over to aluminum, three is still the biggest energy level and we have two in the S, one in the P for a total of three. If we look at phosphorus, same idea. We're still three is the biggest and we have two and three, that's five total electrons. And as we move down any group, the valence electron shell changes, but we still have the same number of valence electrons. So here we still have four S2 and four P1. So that's still three valence electrons. Then we have five S2 and five P1, three valence electrons. Then we have 6s2 and 6p1 and so on. The same thing if we look at these halogens, they all have seven. We talked about writing these configurations and identifying valence electrons from them in unit two. So you should be familiar with how to count the valence electrons. If you're not, you should go back to that unit. So hopefully you saw a nice little pattern. And that is that all of these have one valence electron, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm going to write my eight here because remember helium would only have two valence electrons. So now we need to think about the charges. We're going to try to figure out what the charge of each family would be. We're going to do that by looking at this. Note here it tells us what an ion is. It's a charged particle. If we look at the atom for potassium and compare it to the ion of potassium, we should notice that what has happened is that this 4s electron has fallen off. Notice that there's just an empty space here. So the potassium ion doesn't have as many electrons. It has lost an electron, giving it a charge of positive one. How do we know it's positive? 
Well, we know potassium has 19 protons and protons are positive. And if we look at the electrons, we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 electrons, which we know are negative. So if we add up all the positive and negative things, we're left with one extra positive charge. So that gives us an overall charge of positive one. This happens for all of the alkali metals. So we can label this positive one. We can do the same thing for magnesium. Magnesium is an alkali earth metal. And we can see that this 3s just sort of goes away. We're missing those two electrons. We know that magnesium normally has 12 protons, but right here the ion form only has 10 electrons, which are negative giving us an overall charge of positive two. How was that created? The atom lost two electrons. We can label that right here. So that is going to happen for all of the alkali earth metals. Then we're gonna jump over to boron. We're gonna skip the transition metals. These cannot be predicted very easily. The charge here varies, so we can't just predict it. We would have to be given more information. So we're gonna skip over here to boron. Notice that here boron has lost three electrons, giving this a positive three charge. Boron always has five protons, but here the ion only has two electrons, giving it a charge of positive three. Another way to think about this is just that we've lost three electrons. So we have gotten rid of, subtracted three negative things. Minus a negative, of course, is a positive. So that's how we get that positive three charge. So you could also think of it that way. So we can label this family positive three. That would be the charge on all of those ions. Carbon is interesting because carbon has options. Carbon can do this. Notice that here, it actually gained all of these electrons. It added all of those. So carbon has six positive protons and in this ion it has 10 negative electrons giving it a negative four charge. But it can also do this. In this process it lost these guys and this one. Remember that these weren't really there. I drew those in. So it lost these two and these two. So if it chooses this route, it has to lose four electrons. Again, it has six protons, but only two electrons, giving it a positive four charge. So carbon can gain four electrons or lose four electrons, meaning it can end up with a positive four charge or a negative four charge. So we can label that plus or minus four on the carbon. When we look at phosphorus, which is in the nitrogen family, we can see that it added three electrons to go from atom to ion. Phosphorus normally has 15 positive protons, and when it adds three more electrons, it has 18 total negative electrons, giving it a negative three charge. Oxygen does something similar. It also adds an electron as an electron. So it gains two electrons, meaning it's going to have a negative two charge, right? It added two negative things. So if we say plus two negatives, that's gonna be a negative two. And then finally, our chlorine represents the halogens and it added one electron. giving it a negative one charge. So we can add those to our periodic table. We said that the phosphorus, which is in the nitrogen family, had a negative three charge. The oxygen had a negative two charge. The fluorine had a negative one charge. And noble gases do not form ions. So there's no charge there. So let's look at this pattern. We start out positive, going positive one, two, three, but then we get to this carbon, which is plus or minus four. That's our clue. 
that we're going to switch signs and we're going to start counting backwards. So then we say negative three, negative two, negative one. And it's a nice, neat little pattern. So we have two patterns. One of them is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the other is plus one, plus two, plus three, plus or minus four. That's our clue. Switch our sign, count backwards. Negative three, negative two, negative one.